When I first got the script, I, I think it struck me on a very, obviously a very deep level, but a very deeply moral level. And I felt a certain um, urge to be a part of that conversation, a conversation about sexual harassment in the workplace, but having that conversation with all its complexities, I think up until reading this script, I guess I'd been so encouraged that the revolution was getting up on its feet, you know, that that I don't feel we've had the chance to really explore it and explore the the murky gray areas where it's, and, and this story really isn't, it's not a story of victimization. It's, it's just so much more complicated than that. And I was, um, you know, when I read the script, I was really struck by how Charles Randolph, the, the writer, really did approach the conversation with all of its complexities and with incredibly complex characters. Characters who, yeah, they, I, I, they feel very conflicted to me and I'm always attracted to characters with a really strong inner conflict. Kayla Pospisil is a fictional character. Um, that's who I play. Uh, she left her local gig working, uh, you know, on the Weather Channel in Orlando to move to New York City, work at Fox News. She, at the beginning of the film, is a low-level associate producer working for Gretchen Carlson, is then um, transitioning to working for Bill O'Reilly, where she works alongside fellow associate producer Jess Carr, played by Kate McKinnon, who I get to do a lot of my stuff with. Um, so yeah, she, she's a young, uh, she's a millennial, uh, an evangelical millennial, um, which, which was great. I really liked, I loved that about her and, and I think it was quite special to read a Christian character who isn't being made fun of, a young one. I, I feel like they're not really represented in pop culture. Evangelical millennials aren't really represented in pop culture in, in a, authentic way, I feel. I feel like it's, if they're ever a part of a project, it's for comic relief, they're playing, you know, super naive or super eager, they're kind of mocking them. And, um, you know, that wasn't Charles's approach with Kayla. Nicole Kidman plays Gretchen Carlson, Charlize Theron plays Megan Kelly, and I play Kayla, a fictional character. And they are three very different women. And I think it would be oversimplifying it to categorize their experiences, past, present and future um, explorations of the, the central theme of the film. But what I do think we see how, how the story differentiates their experiences, I think Gretchen, Nicole's character, is, is kind of like our moral center of the story. It's her choice that propels the story. Uh, I think Megan is our narrative center. She's our guide throughout the story. And I think Kayla is meant to be the emotional center and the person through which you live through the, the harassment and its effects. Um, I think all three, you can't, all three are crucial to the story. Um, I think it's, again, it's, it's not so easy to categorize these things and put them into boxes, but I think Gretchen's more kind of gender bullying, uh, uh, Megan's harassment was something that she kind of went through, came out the other side and came out even stronger. And, and Kayla's, you know, experiencing in real time with the audience, the audience is experiencing it with her. So it's hard to fit them neatly into what they are, but that, that's the best I could do, I suppose. <laughs> I look up to Charlize already as an actress and a producer watching another like badass actress, badass producer um, do her thing and getting to see it firsthand now. It's just wicked. It's so cool. And I'm so happy because she, she's a real producer. She's, it is not a vanity title. It is, she is, she is there. She's on set on days when she doesn't need to be on set, on days when she's not working. Obviously I'm not privy to the pre-production schedule and I won't be privy to the post-production schedule, but for main production, she is there and that part of it I get to witness. Um, and you can tell that she's been ingrained in this process from the beginning. You can tell that she's, you know, approach this project um, with the level of uh, dedication that I feel that Charles and Jay 
and everyone on the project really has. I don't think you take on a subject like this lightly, and, and Charlie certainly hasn't. You can, you can see the work. My first day of acting, I actually got to do a scene with both John and Nicole. And seeing Nicole's Gretchen, I was interested to see what that was going to be like because the whole point of Gretchen at this moment in the script is that she is, you know, becoming unwatchable to viewers. Yet you've got Nicole, the most watchable actress, playing her. And I was like, how is she going to find that balance? How does she stay true to the character and also make it a character worth spending time with? And then she starts acting and you're like, well, that's why she's Nicole Kidman. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> she has this X factor, you know? Same with Charlize. They just have a presence. They have that thing that makes you lean in as an audience member. Hi there, it's Debbie. We all know Margot Robbie for her blockbuster roles as well as her stunning looks. But when she starred in The Wolf of Wall Street as Leonardo DiCaprio's on-screen wife, she had to do many full frontal nude shots. When her family eventually went to see the film, she was so embarrassed that she lied, telling them her head had been digitally added to a model's body for the scenes. Remember to click here below to subscribe, or on the side, for more great content.